Okay. So um, this is the first case, uh, ignore the liver, there's just some cysts there. And you can see that there is a mass in the left upper quadrant. Um, it's mostly cystic, but it seemed to have these complex components, including calcifications. And we weren't sure where this mass was coming from. It didn't look like it was definitely coming from the colon, not definitely from the spleen. There was no um, claw sign with the kidney. We thought maybe this is a distal pancreatic mass, like a mucinous cystic neoplasm or a spend tumor. But you can see that the pancreas actually is over here and it's normal. Um, so the only real organ this mass seemed to be touching or uh, was the stomach over here. Uh, oh, uh, Michelle's asking about the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland was here. Um, that's good. Uh, it's a good thought for something kind of more medially, but that would be a very, very exophytic uh, adrenal tumor. Uh, but that's a really good thought. Any other thoughts? Uh, gastric mass. So what kind of gastric mass? Okay, uh, gist tumor, and that's a great thought. So we were thinking, oh yeah, maybe this is a completely exophytic gist tumors. They can start getting necrotic. Um, they can also have calcifications, especially um, as they're more indolent or after they've been treated with Gleevec. Uh, yep, another guess for treated or cystic gist. Paraganglioma, that's a really good thought. Um, they can be in the retroperitoneum, they can be anywhere. They tend to be a little bit more along the aorta where the sympathetics and parasympathetics parasymp would be, or of course, if, if they're in the adrenal gland themselves. Any other thoughts? Mucinous mets, good. So I will show you just another um, image of this one on the coronal, uh, a schwannoma was brought up. So you can see it's pretty elongated, calcified, solid mass, and it has this interface here with the stomach. Okay, so I have a companion case. This is a completely different patient. And they have the same entity. So um, here is a cystic lesion. It's kind of got a mildly thickened wall. It doesn't look as complex as the last case. And um, this is the coronal. That's oblong, mildly thickened wall. It's got this broad interface with the stomach. Um, so yeah, this, um, Githanjali and Alina are saying duplication cysts. So these were both um, duplication cysts. Um, let me go to my slides here. So this first one was actually a, uh, a duplication cyst of the stomach with squamous cell carcinoma, which is very rare, both in the stomach and in a duplication cyst. Um, this was resected and it came back squamous cell. This other one that looked pretty benign looking was mostly a duplication cyst, but there was five millimeters of adenocarcinoma. And it wasn't just a gastric adenocarcinoma, it was actually of pancreatic origin. So this gets back to Alina's point that she just made, which is that these duplication cysts can have ectopic tissue, including pancreatic tissue, et cetera. So I have a very similar slide to what Alina just showed. So this was um, GI duplication cysts are most common in the ileum, esophagus, a large bowel. Gastric is only 7%. Um, the gastric ones and all um, are attached to the stomach, often off of the greater curvature. They don't communicate with the lumen, so they'll appear as submucosal masses on um, EUS and they share a blood supply with the stomach. They also share a muscular wall with the stomach and the entire duplication cyst is lined with both, both a muscular wall and a mucosal layer that can be made from any of these things. So gastric or duodenal mucosa, ectopic pancreatic tissue, lymphoid tissue, respiratory epithelium. So I like to think of these kind of like Meckel's diverticula that can have like gastric um, tissue in them or pancreatic tissue. In this case, our second um, duplication cyst actually had, must have had pancreatic tissue in it and that pancreatic tissue ended up getting an adenocarcinoma in it. So pretty rare, um, both having a gastric duplication cyst and having either squamous cell or pancreatic malignancy in it. Um, and actually a follow-up to this patient. So she only had five millimeters of adenocarcinoma in her um, gastric um, duplication cyst. But unfortunately, um, oh, whoops, sorry, this is not the right word. Um, this was her follow-up exam a couple of years later and she has ascites and now you can see that there is omental um, disease. 
So even from that little five millimeters of tumor in her gastric duplication cyst, she ended up developing carcinomatosis. Um, my, uh, and then also probably ovarian Krippenberg tumors. So my, I was showing this case to my colleagues today and they were asking me like, does this mean that you would you know, resect every gastric duplication cyst or every duplication cyst that you see? And I don't, know, um, I don't know exactly what the percentages are, but definitely if it has any complexity to it or maybe if it has a thickened wall, um, these do have a malignant potential and you should consider resecting them. Um, so, uh, one of the questions was, did the calcifications increase suspicion for malignancy? Um, I don't think necessarily, but um, I mean, that definitely means it's more complex. Um, in this case, a squamous cell, and I mean, it's extremely rare to get squamous cell even in your stomach, never mind in a duplication cyst. So I think um, this one looked complex enough that it was going to come out, and um, you know, the calcifications, they probably do mean that it, there is more complexity there than just being a tiny, simple cyst. <laughs> 